Monotropism – Setting up the science The theory of monotropism describes the way in which autistic people's neurology processes sensory information, engages with something in order to give it our full focused attention, works to move our attention from one thing to another, and validates autistic experience in a non-pathological way. In order to give anything our full attention, we need to build up inertia, allowing our sensory systems time to align themselves with what we're focusing on. What's happening in that time is the monotropic brain is looking for an in, a hook, something to spark its interest. What does it look and feel like? Autistic people experience attention very differently to non-autistic people. Once it has found that hook, the autistic brain is able to lock onto it, but the focus of our attention has more mass than anything else in our environment. It's like a black hole. Its gravity drags us in. We're pulled towards it with immense force, hurtling through a tunnel of attention. We then experience a state of flow, where the object of our attention becomes all-encompassing. Inside that flow state, we can have incredibly intense experiences. It enables us to explore topics at great depths and complete tasks to a high degree of proficiency. It can feel incredibly good to access a flow state around your passions, increasing your levels of enjoyment and satisfaction, and thus increasing the intensity of the flow. If an autistic person is in an environment in which they feel unsafe, sensorily or emotionally, greater monotropic depth can be needed to cut out those negative sensations. Conversely, unsafe places and situations can dysregulate us too much so that we're unable to build enough inertia to get into a flow state. Why is it important to know this? If you aren't aware of monotropic neurology, it can be easy to assume that while in a flow state, an autistic person is deliberately disengaged, deliberately not listening, or not paying attention on purpose. This is all classified negatively as challenging behavior, but is not the case. It can be easy to assume that an autistic person should transition between states of attention as quickly as non-autistic people do. But coming out of your attention tunnel and moving your attention from one thing to another can be difficult and take time. You're pulling the weight of your being out of a gravity well, and afterwards you need to realign your sensorial and emotional state, and then refocus on the next thing that needs your attention. If an autistic person is pulled out of monotropic flow too quickly, it causes our sensory systems to dysregulate. This in turn triggers us into emotional dysregulation, and we quickly find ourselves in a state ranging from uncomfortable, to grumpy, to angry, or even triggered into a meltdown or a shutdown. This reaction is also often classed as challenging behavior, when really it is an expression of distress caused by the behavior of those around us. How you can get things wrong, not preparing for transitions, too many instructions, speaking too quickly, not allowing processing time, using demanding language, using rewards or punishments instead of intrinsic motivation, poor sensory environment,